Kate, thank you so much for joining us um, and coming back. Uh, you came and spoke to us um, last year. Oh no, gosh, that was two years ago. This year was it two years ago? Time flies. Yeah. Time has time has flown, and um, it was an amazing time. Such an encouraging time for us as a community. We were kind of quite new at that stage as well, um, and so so thankful for you to coming back and uh, we're in this series uh, that we've called take stock and take heart and we're looking at spiritual emotional physical and mental health just recognizing that uh, we all have mental health like those other things physical emotional spiritual um, and so we wanted to talk about that um, and we thought uh, we want to get the expert in um, uh, and so um, just ask a few questions and then we'll see where we go and, and the first one um, is uh, this kind of, um, as we think about mental health in general and as we try and uh, follow the way of Jesus together, um, what advice would you start off with? Is how do we support one another? How do we support ourselves just in this area of, of mental health? Yeah, that's such a good question. This is such an unusual time, I think, for mental and emotional well-being, just in terms of how one moment has affected all of us. And in some ways that gives us quite a good wake up call and perspective on our mental and emotional well-being because we've all universally been pushed into a place where we have to think about that probably for the first time and for a lot of people in their lives really where that stuff has become challenging on an everyday basis and and that really does not just to recognize like you say that we all have mental and emotional health it, it isn't like this two box model where some people are unwell and the rest of us are well and the risk of that model is that basically what we do with our mental and emotional well-being is well nothing really we just don't think about it unless we become unwell and we're very crisis focused and all of our talk all of our conversations about mental health are very illness focused what does it look like to be ill i am ill this is how it limits me Instead of thinking, actually, what can we do to really get the best out of ourselves, out of our brains, out of the people that we are? How can we understand what it looks like to be you, to be me when we're at our best? If we're going to struggle, how are we going to struggle? Because everybody's different. And recognizing that life sometimes pushes us up and down that line of, of well-being. And, and so recognizing that in this moment is really good. And what it means we can do is create a space in our culture, in our communities, in our families, in our workplaces, in our friendship groups, where it's okay to share, not just like, actually, did you know I'm ill now? But like, here's how my week's gone. And, and actually, there's this thing right now that's really rubbish, and I'm finding it quite hard. And how do you manage that? And, and actually, like, you know, gosh, in the last month, I've suddenly started waking up at four every morning, and I can't get back off to sleep, and I'm knackered. So how do you, has that ever happened? You know, we can talk honestly about stuff that's that's difficult for us, the ups and the downs, but also how we stay well, how we do life better. And I think that's really exciting because our culture is so much about being superhuman, like la 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 la, I've got it all covered, mm. I'm, I'm doing really well, until the moment you crash and burn and then we talk about it. And so to say, actually, let's throw that on its head. Let's say like, actually, hey, I am messy, I'm vulnerable, I struggle with some stuff, I'm a human being. How about you? you? Um, and that's a, that's a good thing we can do to support everyone. Yeah, I love that. And uh, particularly as you talk about like um, our wellness, our, like our well-being being this, it's like a scale. Um, and, you know, we, we're kind of, we find ourselves on it somewhere. And I guess like, within that, um, as, as it feels like we go through, and particularly at the moment, um, we, it feels like a season where it is, it is hard. Like just life is hard. Um, uh, just the normal things of life are different and so uh, I guess as, as we try and follow Jesus in that and um, any like tips or advice of how in the ever-changing mood and environment and our mental health like how do we be consistent following Jesus like how do, how do we stick close to God in that yeah and I think we need to recognize that 
everything has changed in this moment. And so the spaces and the places and the patterns that we would have for normally doing that have, have, have largely gone or changed, at least, even if they're still there in some format. And that applies to wider life too. And your brain relies on routine to keep your stress level low. And, mm-hmm. and, and what's happened because everything has changed is everybody's stress level has gone up. And we're, we're all operating now in this sort of overwhelmed space where we feel like we might go under. Like genuinely, our brains are having to work that much harder to think about how we do everything not just connect with god so so we are we are in this space the sort of overwhelm zone and and when we're in that space in terms of our stress level that affects us emotionally too and 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 it changes the way that your brain responds to everything it's a bit like your mind goes onto a sort of emergency setting because it's it's under a lot of pressure and it's interesting how that affects our connection with God and our ability to perceive and experience God changes in those moments. And you can see biblical examples of that all over the place. You know, somebody like Elijah really having a moment of stress and people often talk about breakdown, but having a sort of post adrenaline reaction moment and, and really struggling with with his experience. Even things like the disciples, the story of when the disciples are on the boat in the Sea of Galilee and they're they're fighting against the wind and the waves and Jesus walks out over the water to them which to be fair is unexpected but (laughs) he's he's their best mate you know they've hung out with him and yet they don't even recognize him that's your brain under pressure your ability to recognize God to feel God changes so the Mm. risk is that in that moment we try and do normal things and 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 it doesn't feel normal and we panic so i think holding your nerve a little bit recognizing this is going to feel different but that's okay in the story of elijah it's very interesting that what god doesn't do the minute when he's had his when he's had his sort of crisis moment god doesn't come straight to him he sends an angel to to him who ministers with some practical physical rests and food gets him back on his feet and then he journeys for quite a long time before he's able to meet with God so I think in this season we do have to be more creative about how we do the God meeting moments and maybe there's some stuff that we might find effective or that, that, that enables us to connect with God now that wouldn't be what we normally do. Maybe some more mm. contemplative stuff, some more repetitive liturgical approaches. Some of these things that are more about dampening down our stress response, men in calm moments with God, finding peace, finding escape from the barrage of negativity and challenge. So some of those approaches might be more effective, but it is also, I think about the journey. So what, mm. what can you do to journey to a space where you can connect with God. So I, I love to bike. I bike a lot. And one of my rides, there's a there's a gate. I, I live in a town, but we're so lucky we're right on the edge of the country. And there's a gate that I bike to. It takes me about 40 minutes to get to this gate and it overlooks quite a nice view. And, and I have found that such a good space to meet with God. And part mm. of the meeting is the journey to get there. It's the listening to music or podcasts or just switching off my mind. Because by the time I get there, very often when I leave home, I just think I can't pray. I just feel overwhelmed. It's too much. By the time I get to that gate, I can sit on it and I can sit and spend some time with God. So mm. think about the journey. And then when it comes to the moment, explore some new stuff. You know, we as a church did the Pete Greg How to Pray course. Don't know if you guys have done that. But that mm. is awesome because what it does is it's quite analytical. It says, like, here's a bunch of ways that you could pray. And you might not have tried them all before. And you, and you sort of you try them out in quite a sort of um, quite a, an analytical way. So sort of see what works for you. And that was brilliant for us, because in this moment, a lot of people found that things that they not found helpful previously actually were really valuable. Yeah, that's great. Um, and yeah, I know some of our tables have uh, have done that. But particularly, I think um, it does. It feels like um, at the moment there is a bit more of a, a push towards the kind of contemplative um um in such a good way of, of kind of almost mm. like retreating from the just the chaos of the world and, and like trying to center yourself on something different that's a bit more consistent and, and healthy and um, so that's such yeah i think that's so uh, so powerful and um uh, as you think as i think about that um are there any like particular uh, I guess, like you've mentioned, Elijah um, uh, in there, and uh, are there like kind of heroes of the faith or here like characters in the Bible that you look to and think, 
they've got they like they had really good rhythms or, or, or things that lessons that we can learn from from them i mean the bible throughout is a wonderful example of a, the stories of many human beings doing life with god and i think there's so many people almost almost every character in the bible is interesting in different ways and i think overall what's so exciting is the way that these people who are like, who are like superhuman heroes of the faith actually are totally human and and i love some of the human stories of the the balance between the, the highs and the lows the strengths and the weaknesses the moments where they get it right the moments where they get it wrong or struggle i mean P- peter's one of my favorites you know as beautiful impulsive like speak first think later peter whose ability to do that means that he's willing to step into things that a lot of the other disciples aren't but struggles so in that story when they are on the lake and Jesus walks out and 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 that's such a great example of how we manage anxiety because when Jesus says to them don't be afraid the the Greek word that he uses there for fear actually it, it talks of a very specific type of fear it's not just saying don't get, have anxiety because we all have anxiety it's a human emotion and why wouldn't they they're, they're in a difficult spot but he's saying don't panic don't feel like you need to run don't feel like you're overwhelmed don't feel like you're going to drown and he, he says the reason is because he's with them and mm. Peter's so amazing because when he hears that he's like right if it's you call me and I'm coming so he releases this thing that he shouldn't have been able to do he steps out of the boat he walks on the water totally out of his comfort zone totally out of his depth but then in such a beautiful human way he looks around himself and suddenly it's like the wind and the waves and the darkness and the storm because it's not a calm day it's not like a beautiful tranquil sunny day it's the Mm. middle of the night it's pitch black it's windy it's horrible and and he freaks out and the story tells us that he starts literally starts to sink he feels like he's going under um and and jesus has to reach into that moment again and and pull him back to security and safety and and that's so much like like you said what we're doing right now in this moment of chaos and panic we are finding our security and safety in a god who never condemns us for having emotions but reaches out and wants to help Mm. us get through but i love the humanity of that story you know that we are all such a jumbled up mix of like brilliance and total potential disaster like almost in the same moment and and it's so good to see those human stories in the bible paul's another one you know this 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 great wholehearted perfectionist passionate guy who starts out his life persecuting christians you know it's 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 a pretty big turnaround for him what he does with his life it's mm. it's amazing but and i love the honesty about how he writes when he's in prison later on in his life and he's really struggling you know in in those moments of saying like like to to do this is something god's called him to but but actually he'd rather go and be in heaven with jesus you know his life in that moment is really tough i love the honesty of the mm. way that he writes so i think i think there's a beautiful freedom from the way that the bible writes about mental and emotional well-being to say actually we're not perfect but there's something amazing in the way God works through us as imperfect, limited humans, that that is powerful. That's the strength. You know, it's like Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount, when you get to the end of yourself as human beings, we can feel like that's a failing place to be. But God says, no, that that's a place of really exciting potential because when there's less of you, there's more of me and mm. see, see what I do in those spaces. Yeah. That's so, that's so good. I think that's, um, just even this morning, just reflecting on um, uh, Paul in Corinthians, just saying, like, I, I, I boast in my weaknesses. Um, like, yeah. I'm proud of the fact that I am broken uh, because cause it just makes more room for Jesus and it, and it brings more of an opportunity for him to be made known. And um, I, I, I guess, like, in there, um, particularly thinking about, like, being a community, being um, uh, people that want we want to be able to support and... Uh, I think we were mentioning earlier, kind of, um, it's, it's just, it, there's a, like a healthy honesty of just saying like, life is hard, life is tough at the moment. Um, do you have any like recommendations or like advice, particularly like wanting to like really support one another in friendships in that way? Any like practical tips of, yeah. of how to do that well? Yeah, sure. And actually there's a, there's a sentence that Paul writes in Romans, which is like amazing, deep psychology, clever guy, um, sort of predating all this psychological knowledge that we have now, which is really relevant in this season. And it's uh, Romans 5, 4, and he says, suffering helps us to endure. And endurance builds character, which gives 
gives us hope that will never disappoint us. And I think in this moment, we are in a space where we, we do have to endure something. We have to persevere, frankly, because we have no choice. There is no way. I can't change this season. I can't make it not hard, not rubbish. There are things about this moment that are really hard and are really rubbish. And for some people more than others, some people's circumstances are really difficult. But when we're in this place where we do you have to endure stick with something what what that does is it, it is it forces us to dig deep within our own resources and we, we can build our ability to respond to that moment so that not only do we do better in that moment but longer term we increase our capacity to hold challenging stuff to step out of our comfort zone to, to push our limits and so often in life we look back on the difficult times and think actually they were the times that grew me that shaped character that develop my relationship with God Mm. so I think this balance between hope and despair is really important and recognizing that this is tough but there are things we can do in this moment that build hope hope doesn't have to be a passive thing you know we're all feeling a bit more hopeful this week because of news is about vaccines and stuff but already people are starting to prick holes in that aren't they and oh well, Mm. well and now we're thinking maybe it's not the answer but hope isn't passive we can build hope ourselves by things that we do that help us feel more in control that help us recognize that we can even in rough places we can shape our world we can help one another we can pull together to do this better and there's a bunch of stuff that psychology teaches us about how we respond that can help us to do it better that can trigger hope that can build character and maturity so i'll 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 do them pretty quick you know so number one is recognizing and responding well to stress peaks so recognizing you're in that stress zone you know when you go into that overwhelm zone it changes the way your mind works you jump to conclusions more you're more prickly emotionally you overreact or that's what your nearest and dearest will say to you you're much more reactive so recognizing you're in that space and sometimes saying either in the moment i need to just take a moment drop my stress level this probably isn't as bad as it feels and also building things in long term that do help you manage stress well rhythms routines rest stuff like that we are under pressure in this moment your stress level will be higher many of us are living on the edge of overwhelm it's like the stress levels here it doesn't take much to push you into a space Mm -hmm. where you're going to struggle so so recognize that keep it as low as possible and in moments where you've gone into that overwhelm zone grab a moment just calm down before you tear strips off everyone around you because it may well be that actually it's not as bad as it feels Number two is about expressing and processing difficult stuff, whether that's negative emotions like anxiety, like frustration, or whether it's just some of the enormity of the questions that this moment is raising in your mind. You know, my, my, I was talking to my son the other day about something and he was like, oh, mommy, do you remember in those days when we did used to go to church and we used to do this? And I just had this moment of like, oh my goodness, for my eight-year-old son, this is like a whole new era now. He's like written off that time when we used to go to church. And I did have a moment of like, I feel like I need to lie on the floor for for about an hour just to think about the enormity of what that means for me, for my son, for how I parent him, for the future. It was just, and there are so many of those moments. So you need time, you need space, you need time on your own to process that stuff. You know, and some people journal, some people ponder stuff you know some people listen to stuff read stuff some people like me just go out and bike for a couple of hours and it makes the whole world feel like a better place whatever works for you but you need friendship conversations where you can talk and say like hey John what are you finding difficult this week here's what I'm finding difficult and gosh what do you think about that and and maybe for some of us even we do need some therapeutic space some boundary space some safe space now or at some point in the future that helps us figure this out So think about expressing and processing. Think about number three, productivity. As humans, we like to feel we're getting somewhere. We're having an impact on the world. And for some people in particular right now, that's really hard. So if you're isolating, we as a family, we're in our second consecutive 14 days of isolation here because child number two got called first. And then literally within 48 hours, child number one got called so it's all right for me, I can go out, but they are, they've been isolating. But so those moments are tough if you're furloughing, if, if your job has changed, if you've lost your job, if you're, you know, it's hard. So how can you, how can you find things that make you feel like you're getting somewhere? In the rough moments, can you play with the fact that will make you feel better? You know, when they announced the second lockdown on that Halloween Saturday, 
my daughter came in, she's like, mom, have you tidied the spice drawer yet? I'm like, no, but I am about to do exactly that. Now, does that change the state of global pandemic? No, but that introducing that level of order, feeling like I've got somewhere, do you know what? It calms you down. I clean the fridge at stressful moments. Whatever works for you. Do something that feels measurable, that feels like you're getting somewhere. Little things. Some people do puzzles. Personally, that would push me over at the edge right now. But it <laughs> works for you do it. So productivity, feeling like you're getting somewhere. Number four is connection. We're designed to do this together. But there's been so much pressure on our relationships, hasn't there? You know, and, 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 and at first when we went to lockdown and it felt like just an acute, crazy, short term, mad moment. What happened is we all retreated into maybe the, the one or two friendships that mattered the most to us. And, and hopefully we kept in contact with some of those. I'm a massive introvert, so I didn't even do that well. I was a bit like, well, if I can't have a proper chat with you over several beers then I'm just like what's the point in us talking at all so I didn't do that great the first time but but as we've gone through and we're now like seven months in the problem is most of the relationship color in our life comes from just the beautiful complexity of all the relationships we have and yeah those people are really important your family your best mates but those people you see down the gym the people you work with the people you see at the bus stop every day people in church you know the the people who you probably wouldn't be good enough mates with to to like zoom once a week in this weird moment but actually we really miss them so think about who are there people you could get back in touch with who you've lost touch with are there some peripheral people who you actually really miss yes think about how therefore do you need to create some spaces where you can have drop in moments with them whether it's yet another whatsapp group which we probably feel like we all need like a hole in the head right now but they do have their their value or Mm -hmm. is there an online space you know that you can use for that stuff and think about when like we all it's that thing when you see someone in the street and you sort of say oh yeah we should get together sometime and then you go off and you think yeah we're not going to do that if you don't plan the when you probably won't do it and especially in this season so Mm -hmm. trying to make things regular where you can like maybe some of these spaces that you think actually this is valuable there is that bunch of us who used to meet together in church or who used to play football together and we can't right now but maybe you do create a zoom hangout space once a week when you would have played football and and even if that's only five minutes you know we can be so all or nothing we think i'll do that if it's going to be like an hour's intense conversation or a zoom pub quiz another thing by the way that would push me over the edge right now but some people love it you know and if we can't do that we don't do anything but actually even if it's just five ten minutes those connections are worth having So that's four. And number five is is quite simple, but not as simple as normal right now. And it's this, just pursue fun. And we've, so many of us, we've just lost fun and and good stuff and and good emotions. And we almost feel guilty for pursuing it because like maybe we should be out doing something really worthy or, you know, there's other stuff we should be doing because we're all so pressed in this moment. But fun, Nehemiah says that that joy is is our strength. And, And that ancient Hebrew word means it's, it's our fortress it's our place of protection it's somewhere we retreat to in moments of battle or in stormy times you know and your ability to just have moments of ridiculous laughter or fun are so important and even more so when the rest of life is tough so what makes you laugh where where do you find those good moments and your brain is so focused on so biased towards negative stuff most of the time but particularly when it's in that emergency zone so we need to be all the more deliberate at spotting good stuff and, and making ourselves indulge in it. And say so it's like squeezing an orange. You know, if you squeeze an orange and you just get like half the juice out, you leave so much behind. So maybe there are some moments where there's a little flicker of something that's good and you need to deliberately and intentionally stop and enjoy those more. You know, if you, mm. you grab a quick coffee with a mate and it's really good, stay longer. Who cares if you've got an email to write? This could be a really valuable moment in your week. The next time mm. you get a hug from someone in your household, you know, linger in it. You, your brain releases positive endorphins when you're and um, hormones when you're in a hug, but only if you stay in it for about 20 to 30 seconds. Interesting. <laughs> So count, linger in it. And if the next time you hug someone in your house, you hear them counting, you know why. Um, (laughs) But like, linger in those moments because we need fun. It's going to get us through. Yeah. 
Amazing. Kate, thank you so much. So, so helpful and, um, yeah, really challenging and helpful. Um, uh, and so, yeah, thank you so, so much uh, for your time and your and your generosity in that. We're so, oh, so appreciative. I just wish I could be with you guys in person, but, you know, when all this craziness is over, maybe then. <laughs> yeah, we would love that. Yeah, we would love that. Thank you so much.